Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to pick up on our series that we're doing on things Jesus never said about healing. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a, a little key to how I reteach myself and break these false or wrong teachings about healing. When I hear someone teach something, okay, the first thing I will do is I don't go and read it in the same translation that they read and taught from. Okay, let's just say they used the NIV and, and they represented that uh, if you don't have enough faith, you can't get healed. Or if you uh, have unforgiveness, you can't get healed. Okay, I won't go home and read in the NIV. Okay, what I'll do is go to the BibleGateway.com website. They have 70 English versions of the Bible, and there's about 40 of them I use. So what I'll do is that I will instead uh, read that verse or verses, passages, in different, three or four at least, sometimes 10 or 12, okay, if I'm really digging. But I will pick out and read slowly out loud what that verse actually says in other translations. And the reasons for that is that it will break my cycle of hearing what that person said because sometimes we read scripture and it's we're not even reading it accurately because it's been read by another person and that's what we hear, okay? So when I read it out loud slowly, now I'm not hearing what they taught and just seeing it from their perspective. Now, here's a second thing that I do. I always go and I read what is in red. I read it slow, out loud, in several different translations. Because when I do that, it will break down and disprove every false teaching that men put out there. It always does, guys. I'm telling you, when I let Jesus and what's in red be the rule, he is my supreme authority. What he says is the golden rule. It don't matter what Pastor Paul or Pastor Jimmy said. I don't care how long they've been saved, and I honestly don't care how many seminaries they've been to. Jesus didn't go to a seminary, okay? I'm going to let Jesus, his words, determine what I believe. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to recap uh, no faith or not enough faith today. And uh, the last two snippets that I did, I was talking about Jesus in his hometown and that people's unbelief stopped uh, them receiving from him. I'm, I wrote a little something to a friend about these, and I just want to read this out loud because this is a very good recap on those two teachings. Unbelief is not not believing, but rather believing the wrong thing. This account of Nazareth, and Jesus not being able to do many mighty works, this account is the perfect example. City after city believed the right thing about Jesus, and the people received whatever they needed. But in Nazareth, they believed something different about Jesus than the other cities. They believed something different about Jesus, and it limited what they could receive. It did not change the power Jesus carried, or what he could have done. Their opinion of Jesus limited what they could receive from him. Okay, If you listen to me very often, you're going to hear me say this. Your opinion of God is going to determine what you can receive from God. Okay. If you have the wrong opinion of God, that's because you're believing the wrong thing. And when you believe the wrong thing, you won't have enough faith toward something to receive what God will give you, okay? I'm going to show you also, I want to bring this up. In James chapter 1, verse 7, it says, A double-minded man can expect to receive nothing from God. It does not say God's holding anything back. It says that a person that's got double-minded thinking can't focus on and believe the right thing so that they can receive through faith what God has for them. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is this faith thing that we, and I want to wrap it up too because I want to move on into unforgiveness, keeping people from being healed because that is a false teaching. I've, 
I personally have seen people that's riddled with unforgiveness because they tell me they are and they get healed anyway. So, and when a woman can't stand up and walk and she gets up and starts walking, I'd say that the unforgiveness didn't stop her healing, her healing from manifesting right there in front of my own eyes. But let me go over and I want to talk about this. And again, I'm going to let Jesus tell you about faith whether you have enough faith or not enough faith and all of that. Here we go. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. And Jesus said, If you have faith like a seed of a mustard plant, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would have to obey you. It's in red. Little bitty amount of faith, right? Okay. Here's Matthew chapter 17, 20. And Jesus said to them, because of your littleness of faith is the reason they couldn't heal the little boy. Okay, this is the account of the demoniac boy having the seizures. The nine couldn't heal him, and they asked Jesus privately later why. And that's what he's saying, because of your littleness of faith. But here's the part I want you to see. For truly I say to you, if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. So see, what Jesus just said is if we have a little bitty mustard seed, you can barely see it, uh, it's the smallest seed that they knew of at this time in Jerusalem, okay? But this small little bitty seed is strong enough to move a mountain into the sea or wherever you tell it to go, okay? Now, this is the, what we get taught. If you have a mountain of faith, maybe you can move a cold. And that is simply not what Jesus said. Jesus said that we just needed a smidgen of faith. And, that, and here's what I want to show you about this. I was praying about this. I'm going down the road worshiping, and he showed me this. And I have to tell you this story. I was talking to him about this mustard seed of faith and everything. And this is what he told me. He said, Faye, it's like you and Eli, okay? This is my baby brother's little boy. Eli's three and a half years old. Eli can walk into your restaurants with a quarter and get anything he wants. And we both know that he cannot buy anything off that menu with that quarter. And I'm like, well, that's right. And he said, so it's not because it's enough money. It's because of who I am. It's like Eli, he knows when he goes into Gammy's restaurant, it's like I can have anything in here. And all the cashier has to do is take his little quarter and hit a bunch of buttons, and he can have everything on the menu if the kid wants it. Why? Because of who I am, and watch this, who he believes I am and what I'm able to provide him with. So it's about who I am, and who he believes I am is what that 25 cents can get that little boy that, watch this, nobody else can have for a quarter because a stranger is not walking in and handing my cashier 25 cents and getting anything off that menu. But that baby, he can walk in and have the whole restaurant for 25 cents. You know, God showed me that faith works like that with him. It's about who he is and who we believe he is, and his love toward us to show us his goodness. So when I love God and know who he is, and I know how much he loves me, he will give me anything in the kingdom of God. He will give me my heart's desire because of our relationship and who he is and who I believe he is and what he's capable of. Okay, so now I, I want to close out on that part of the Jesus being limited and Jesus not being able to do any miracles, that's not true. I've closed that out. Now I've closed out this faith or lack of faith or no faith. I'm going to start in on, and here's this is the easiest one to lay down. I'm going to go over to this part of our teaching on unforgiveness keeps people from getting healed. Did you know there's not a scripture in your Bible that says that? And Jesus, I assure you, did not say that, okay? So let's go over to Matthew chapter 6. This is where we call it the Lord's Prayer. 
the boys wanted Jesus to teach them how to pray, and Jesus teaches them, and we have two accounts. One's in Matthew, one's in Luke. But here we go. Down here on verse 14, it says, and this is in red, Jesus said it, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, then neither your Father will forgive your trespasses. Okay. This is what the scripture does not say. So I'm going to read what it does not say. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will heal you. But if you do not forgive people their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not heal you. Doesn't say that. Jesus was talking, and this is before the cross, and this is what's so important about this specific teaching. Number one, it didn't even about healing. It's about us walking around holding offenses and grudges, which tear us up on the inside and destroy us, not the other person, okay? Jesus was talking about that we needed to be more like God and forgive people, all right? So let me go over, and I want to read some things to you right here. Now, this was before the cross, but I want to show you in Mark chapter 3, verse 28 and 29 something. This is in red. Jesus said it. Truly I say to you that all sins, that's A-L-L by the way, all sins and blasphemes by which have been said or blasphemed shall be forgiven to the sons of men. Okay, all sins shall be forgiven to the sons of men. Here's the one thing that you can't get forgiven for. But he that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, he that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit has no remission of that sin, but he shall be guilty of everlasting trespass. This is where Jesus was being accused of using the devil, Satan, to heal people. And he was actually operating through the power of Holy Spirit, not the power of Satan. And Jesus was saying that, you know, you can say anything you want to about me, but when you start saying that the power of God is actually Satan's power, now you're walking on some really shaky ground here. But I'll get back to what I want to teach you out of this. Did you notice that it, Jesus said that all sins were going to be forgiven of man? Okay, so let me flip over and show you that it's already been done. And this is so important because, you know, uh, this was before the cross, and now after the cross, let's see what is said. This is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 uh, and 32. Let there be no more resentment, no more anger or temper, no more violent self-assertiveness, no more slander, no more malicious remarks. Be kind ye to one another and be understanding. Be as ready to forgive others as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. That's past tense. For Christ's sake, we have been forgiven. So see, at the cross, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection paid for all of the forgiveness of all of our sins. And it actually says that our sins have been remitted, carried away, and erased, and never did even exist in God's mind anymore. If you're a born-again believer, your sins have been forgiven you. That's a past tense already been done. I want to show you also in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. This is a second witness to what I just showed you. Be tolerant of one another and forgive each other if anyone has a complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you also should forgive. Do you see that? That's a past tense. So we have already been forgiven so we're not even in a trading situation with God, okay? He's not not forgiving us. Look, you need to forgive people because it's for your own good. It's good for your mental health and your spiritual health and your physical health. But I know for a fact, a 100% fact, that I have been told by people that they have unforgiveness and have been told they can't be healed till they deal with that by other pastors or teachers and I have seen people get up out of chairs from being crippled and not able to walk. And I didn't even address their unforgiveness. Actually, most of the time, it is a spirit of trauma that is coming against them. That's another teaching. 
but your healing is not based on your goodness and whether you forgive people. It's based on God's goodness. I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.